Good evening, I'm Paul Fraser and this is the latest news from Bahrain International. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received the custodian of the two holy mosques, His Royal Majesty King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, upon his arrival at Sakhir Palace this evening on an official historic visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain. Also to receive the Saudi monarch was His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. An official reception ceremony was held for the Saudi monarch, where the royal anthems of both countries were played.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدي خادم الحرمين الشريفين الملك سلمان بن عبد العزيز آل سعود ملك المملكة العربية السعودية الشقيقة حفظه الله ورعاه سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه أصحاب السمو الملكي أصحاب المعالي والسعادة ضيوفنا الكرام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته إنها لمناسبة تاريخية عزيزة مميزة كبرى يتجلى فيها تاريخ طويل من علاقات راسخة في أعماق التاريخ بين مملكة البحرين والمملكة العربية السعودية الشقيقة أسس لها الوالد والمؤسس والموحد الملك عبد العزيز آل سعود طيب الله ثراه مع أشقائه آل خليفة حكام البحرين الكرام واليوم تقومون يا خادم الحرمين الشريفين بتجديد هذا النهج التاريخي بزيارة أخيكم حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه حيث يجتمع القائدان العربيان الكريمان بحصيلة وافرة من الإنجازات لشعبيهما فأهلا وسهلا بكم يا خادم الحرمين الشريفين أيها الحضور الكريم خير بداية لحفلنا هذا تلاوة عطرة من القرآن الكريم يتلوها على مسامعنا القارئ علي صلاح عمر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فما أوتيتم من شيء فمتاع الحياة الدنيا وما عند الله خير وأبقى للذين آمنوا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون والذين يجتنبون كبائر الإثم والفواحش وإذا ما غضبوا والذين استجابوا لربهم وأقاموا الصلاة وأقاموا الصلاة وأمرهم شورى بينهم ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين إذا أصابهم البغي هم ينتصرون صدق الله العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تقدير للدور الكبير الذي يقوم به خادم الحرمين الشريفين الملك سلمان بن عبد العزيز ال سعود ملك المملكه العربيه السعوديه في دعم روابط الاخوه التاريخيه العريقه الراسخه والتعاون بين المملكه العربيه السعوديه الشقيقه ومملكه البحرين في جميع المجالات يغلد سيدي حضره صاحب الجلاله الملك حمد بن عيسى ال خليفه ملك مملكه البحرين المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه وسام الشيخ عيسى بن سلمان آل خليفة من الدرجة الممتازة 
Essentially, the king presented the custodian of the two holy mosques with the Shahisa bin Salman al Khalifa Medal of the First Degree. أيها الحضور الكريم للشعر مكان في حضرة الملوك الأجلاء فبهذه المناسبة العزيزة على قلوبنا يتشرف سمو الشيخ ناصر بن حمد آل خليفة بإلقاء هذه القصيدة الشعرية. Then His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa recited a poem before His Majesty the King and His Royal Majesty the Sali Mullah. الحمد لله على السلامة وتومات شرفت مملكة البحرين بزيارتكم لنا اليوم عيد بتواجدكم معنا في بلادكم وبين أخوانكم وبين عيالكم فاسمح لي أني أتشرف يا صاحب الجلالة أني أعد قصيدتي أمامكم قال من هو قال من هو لا بدل لازم عزم يبدأ على بيات في الوقت الوجيز بندقة ما هي تلك ولا تزم كل ما نيشن ما هي بتروح شيز باسم قايدنا برحب وعزم بالعزيز اللي رحب به عزيز مرحبا يا راس عاصفة الحزم يا الملك سلمان بن عبد العزيز باسم قايدنا برحب وعزم بالعزيز اللي رحب به عزيز مرحبا يا راس عاصفة الحزم يا الملك سلمان بن عبد العزيز عند قايدنا حمد راع الجزم المليك اللي له العالم يجيز عند من قال احتزم بي واحتزم لا غدا في ساحة الميدان زيز عند قايدنا حمد راع الجزم الملك اللي له العالم يجيز عند من قال احتزم بي واحتزم لا غدا في ساحة الميدان زيز شعبنا واحد وبالعهد التزم وصفنا واحد ولا فينا لزيز ما حفظنا عهدنا حفظ الرزم العهد في صدورنا مثل القفيز والله إنا نخزم العايل خزم من زمان السيف والقب الجهيز من مشى في دربنا ما ينهزم كلنا للحق واصحابه نحيز وسلامتكم قال من هو لا بفين اردا دانس واز ذن بيفورد Thank you. 
وابتهاجا بمقدمكم الكريم يا خادم الحرمين الشريفين يتشرف الشاعر مشعل الحارثي بإلقاء هذه القصيدة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته A poem by the Saudi poet Mishal al-Harithi was then recited أرضة إلا الحرب تضرب سلام وتستعد يا سلام الله سلامي على الضيف الكبير سيدي سلمان في دار بن عيسى حمد للسعودية هجسور مع البحرين غير قبل يربط بيننا جسر ابو فيصل فهد الصديق يا ملوك الدار يا ملوك الدار يا ذخر من ماله ذخير من تلوى في دراكم على القمة صعد الصديق يقودنا له مثل تلك الحرير والعدو نوثق قياده بحبل من مسد يوم نادانا يوم نادانا جنوب الجزيره مستجير الحرايب ولعت فيه والهايب قعد 
ما خذينا الراي من راس مندوب وسفير ما اخذينه من ملوك يفكون العقد يوم نادانا جنوب الجزيرة مستجير الحرايب ولعت فيه والهايب قعد ما خذينا الراي من راس مندوب وسفير ما اخذينه من ملوك يفكون العقد دام لجرب سيفنا ما لنا غير شوير عاش من رده على اهل البلد يا اهل البلد سله اللي يوم سله ما رده في الجفير فيصليا من يعاديه يبشر بالنكد في نهار الحرب نفرق عشير من عشير والخليفي قدم الروح وسخى بل ولد دارنا دونك نهار عبوس قمطرير قل هو النصر المبين وقل هو الله واحد أمركم سيدي أسند البراق بما تنك وبسند The Saudi Ada was also then performed. الشطير عرضة الله الحرب تضرب سلام وتستعد يا سلام الله أسند البراق بمتنك وبس في الشطير أسند البراق بمتنك وبس في الشطير عرضة للحرب تضرب سلام وتستعد
His Majesty the King held a meeting with the Saudi monarch at Sakhir Palace. His Majesty welcomed the Saudi monarch as a dear guest of the Kingdom of Bahrain, which a bond of love has existed between the two countries and their peoples throughout history. The two leaders reviewed the historic brotherly relations between the two countries and the development such relations are witnessing in various fields. His Majesty the King voiced pride in the deep relations which were established by the forefathers and were built on over time. His Majesty voiced trust that such a visit will be a stepping stone in the Bahraini Saudi relationship march at all levels and will contribute in meeting the aspirations of the people of the two kingdoms. His Majesty voiced trust that such a visit will be a stepping stone in the Bahraini Saudi relation march at all levels and will contribute in meeting the aspirations of the people of the two kingdoms. The two leaders expressed their joint desire to further strengthen relations between the two countries as well as coordination and cooperation for the interest of the two countries and their peoples. The two leaders also discussed the recent developments on the regional and international fronts where His Majesty lauded the stances of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia towards Arab and Islamic issues. The custodian of the two holy mosques expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for the hospitality he and his delegation received, which reflects the deep relations between the two countries. He valued the role of His Majesty the King in developing such relations. King Salman bin Abdulaziz also congratulated His Majesty the King on the success of the GCC summit, lauding the efforts of His Majesty in adding success to the summit and his efforts in supporting the joint march of the GCC for the interests of the people of the Gulf Corp, the GCC. His Majesty the King held a dinner banquet in honour of the custodian of the two holy mosques and his accompanying delegation. Present were His Royal Highness the Premier, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and senior officials from the two sides. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa chaired the 37th GCC Summit at the Meeting Hall in Sakhir, with the participation of their Majesties and their Highnesses, the leaders of the GCC Member States and the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Theresa May, as the Guest of Honour. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أصحاب الجلالة والسمو دولة السيدة تريزا مي رئيسة وزراء المملكة المتحدة الصديقة حضور الكرام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته
يطيب لي باسم إخواني قادة دول مجلس التعاون وباسم أن أشكر دولة رئيسة وزراء المملكة المتحدة الصديقة السيدة تريزا ماي على حضورها هذا الاجتماع الهام في أول زيارة رسمية لها للمنطقة كضيفة شرف في هذه القمة والتي تحمل دلالات بالغة الأهمية تعمل على تقوية مسيرة التعاون التاريخية العريقة التي تجمع المملكة المتحدة بدول مجلس التعاون لأكثر من مائتي عام ونتطلع بأن تثمر مباحثاتنا اليوم عن آفاق أرحب من التعاون نستشرف من خلالها طبيعة ومتطلبات مرحلة العمل المقبلة بين الجانبين لنصل إلى اتفاقات وقرارات نوعية جديدة للبناء على ما تم إنجازه عبر تبادل المرئيات والخبرات لمستويات أكثر تقدماً في المجالات كافة وخاصة السياسية والدفاعية والأمنية والاقتصادية والتركيز على تطوير الشراكة بين القطاع العام والخاص واستثمار الفرص الكبيرة والواعدة من خلال خطة عمل محددة وواضحة تعتمد الآليات المناسبة لاستمرارية التشاور والتعاون والتنسيق وبما يوثق من علاقاتنا الاستراتيجية مع المملكة المتحدة الصديقة أصحاب الجلالة والسمو إن عقد مثل هذه القمة بما تحمله من أهداف وتوجهات حيوية وجوهرية على صعيد علاقات دول المجلس والمملكة المتحدة له قرار موفق وتوجه مبارك لأهمية ما تشكله التحالفات الاستراتيجية في عالم اليوم لمواجهة المتغيرات والتحديات المختلفة والحاجة إلى التقارب والتنسيق المستمر لحفظ مكتسباتنا كشعوب ودول محتضنة للبناء والتنمية ومحبة للسلام والاستقرار وأننا على ثقة تامة بأن مسيرة العمل المشتركة بين الجانبين ستشهد نغلة نوعية بالنظر إلى طبيعة العلاقات الودية الوثيقة التي تربطنا بالمملكة المتحدة والقائمة على أسس الثقة والاحترام المتبادل شاكرين حسن استماعكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعطي الكلمة الآن لدولة السيدة تريزا ماي رئيسة وزراء المملكة المتحدة فلتتفضل Your Majesties, Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, I'm delighted <coughs> to be here in Manama following in the footsteps of His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales in celebrating two centuries of relations between Bahrain and the United Kingdom. And I'm very grateful to His Majesty King Hamad for bestowing on me this special honour to be invited to address the leaders of the Gulf Cooperation Council. We meet at a time of great change in the world, political change, economic change, social change. In almost every sphere, we are confronted with change and uncertainty. The risks to our shared security are growing and evolving as terrorists operate across national borders to plot attacks against our people, as new threats emerge from the malevolent use of the internet, and as certain states continue to act in ways that undermine stability in your region, undermining, in turn, our own security in the West and further reinforcing the need for all of us to work together. We in the West face the challenge of trying to manage those forces of globalization that in recent times have left some of our people behind. Here in the Gulf, you too are facing the challenges of securing jobs and opportunities for your peoples and building what I call an economy that works for everyone. 
In this uncertain world, people are searching for direction and leadership, and we have a responsibility to provide it. I believe it is more than a responsibility, for if we work together, it is also an unparalleled opportunity to show that we understand the scale of the change people need, understand truly what lies behind it, and most importantly of all, that we as leaders are trusted to deliver. One of the prevailing sentiments in all my conversations with GCC leaders over the last five months since I became Prime Minister has been this sense that in challenging times you turn to your oldest and most dependable friends. That is the spirit in which I come here today. We have a rich history on which to build. From the very first treaties in the mid-17th century, which saw the East India Company reach agreements on British trade and a military presence in Oman, to our deep partnership as Cold War allies, the UK has been proudly at the forefront of a relationship between the Gulf and the West that has been the bedrock of our shared prosperity and security. And as the United Kingdom leaves the European Union, I am determined that we should seize the opportunity to get out into the world and to shape an even bigger global role for my country. Yes, to build new alliances, but more importantly, to go even further in working with old friends, like our allies here in the Gulf, who have stood alongside us for centuries. There has never been a more important or more challenging time to do so. In the face of growing extremism and radicalisation, not unique to this region, but here in its most egregious form. In the face of threats to the rules-based order, which has underpinned not just our shared security, but also the foundations for our shared prosperity. The UK stands here today seeking not just to reaffirm a relationship that is of great historic value, but to renew a partnership that is absolutely fundamental to our shared future. So in accepting the honour of addressing GCC leaders, I seek not just to offer a message of continuity, but to begin to build a new, bold new chapter in our cooperation. Not to develop a transactional relationship, but rather to forge a strategic relationship, a relationship based on true partnership and an enduring commitment between our countries and our peoples, a relationship through which together we can meet these great challenges to our shared security and prosperity and grab this opportunity to build an exciting future for the generations that follow us. So let me set out some of the ways in which the UK will step up its relationship with the GCC and let me start with security. Gulf security is our security. Extremists plotting terror attacks here in this region are not only targeting the Gulf, but as we have seen, targeting the streets of Europe too. Whether we're confronting the terrorism of Al-Qaeda or the murderous barbarity of Daesh, no country is, more, is a more committed partner for you in this fight than the United Kingdom. Today, UK servicemen and women are putting their lives on the line at the heart of the international mission against Daesh in Iraq and Syria. We are making progress, and as we are seeing with the current operations in Mosul, the days of Daesh as an occupying force are numbered. Through our close cooperation on counter-terrorism, we are succeeding in foiling terrorist plots and a range of threats against citizens in all our countries. For example, intelligence we have received in the past from Saudi Arabia has saved potentially hundreds of lives in the UK. And by focusing not just on violent extremism, but on the whole spectrum of extremism, violent and non-violent at home and abroad, we are not just going after the terrorists, but working to address the causes of this terrorist threat by targeting the ideology of extremism and all those who seek to spread it. As we address new threats to our security, so we must also continue to confront state actors whose influence fuels instability in the region. So I want to assure you that I am clear-eyed about the threat that Iran poses to the Gulf and the wider Middle East. The UK is fully committed to our strategic partnership with the Gulf and working with you to counter that threat. We secured a deal which has neutralised the possibility of Iran acquiring nuclear weapons for over a decade. It has already seen Iran remove 13,000 centrifuges, together with associated infrastructure, 
and eliminate its stock of 20% enriched uranium. That was vitally important for regional security. But we must also work together to push back against Iran's aggressive regional actions, whether in Lebanon, Iraq, Yemen, Syria, or in the Gulf itself. We must also continue to work together to achieve a just and comprehensive settlement to the Israeli-Palestinian issue, building on efforts such as the Arab Peace Initiative and harnessing the influence of all of us around this table to bring together those with a stake in a lasting peace built around a two-state solution. This remains fundamental to the long-term security and prosperity of the whole Middle East. In recent years, we have retained the ability to defend our mutual interests when threatened by deploying UK assets to the region, as we did when Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait, and as we are continuing to do with HMS Ocean, which I visited yesterday, as it begins its deployment here in Bahrain. But as part of the renewed relationship that I want to forge with you, the United Kingdom will make a more permanent and more enduring commitment to the long-term security of the Gulf. We will invest in hard power with over £3 billion of defence spending in the region over the next decade, spending more on defence in the Gulf than in any other region of the world. Through the construction of HMS Jaffer and thanks to the generosity of the Kingdom of Bahrain, we will create a permanent presence in the region, the first such facility east of Suez since 1971. With more British warships, aircraft and personnel deployed on operations in the Gulf than in any other part of the world. At the same time, a regional land training hub in Amman is establishing a permanent British Army presence in the region. And I'm delighted to announce that Saif Saria 3 will take place in Amman in 2018, the largest UK Amani exercise for 15 years. We will also go further in deepening our defence cooperation through a new strategic partnership between the UK and the GCC, supporting the devel development of your defence capacity and capability, including for humanitarian operations and crisis response planning. As part of this, we will establish a new British defence staff in Dubai to coordinate our regional activities, and here in Bahrain, we will embed a dedicated military officer with the Ministry of Interior Bomb Disposal Unit to provide bomb scene management support and training. We will establish a new joint working group on counter-terrorism and border security and a new national security dialogue at GCC level to protect critical national infrastructure, facilitate faster intelligence sharing on suspected foreign terrorist fighters and implement traveller screening systems to detect terrorists attempting to pass through any GCC airport. And because we know that our enemies are increasingly using the internet against us, we will use our expertise in cyber security technologies to build our resilience and that of our international partners. So we are appointing world leading cyber experts with extensive backgrounds in delivering cyber security in the UK to provide focused advice to Gulf states on developing your own capacity, as well as a new cyber industry representative based in the region, who will build links between cyber sectors in the UK and the Gulf. In all of these ways, I am determined that the UK will be at the forefront of a wider Western effort to step up our defence and security partnership, not just to provide greater stability and security to the region, but also to protect the rules-based order that has been so fundamental to our shared prosperity. When I think of the growth of this region over the past 50 years, from the transformation of Dubai to the position of the Gulf as the UK's third largest export market, I never forget that the bedrock of this prosperity and stability has been the relationship between the Gulf and the West. Now, in this period of uncertainty, is the time to recommit to this relationship. That is why I am here, to signal my commitment to this relationship and to build on the foundations of our continued partnership in security and prosperity for decades to come. For just as Gulf security is our security, so your prosperity is also our prosperity. Already the Gulf is a special market for the United Kingdom. Last year alone, trade between the UK and GCC 
was worth more than £30 billion. At the same time, Gulf investment in the UK is helping to regenerate cities from Aberdeen to Teesside and from Manchester to London. I am determined that we should do everything possible to build on this and elevate our trade and investment to an even more ambitious level. So I will continue the work that the UK has been leading over the past three years to make London one of the great capitals of Islamic finance anywhere in the world. And as Britain leaves the European Union, so we intend to take a leap forward, to look outwards and seek to become the most committed and most passionate advocate of free trade in the world. For free trade makes us all richer. It creates jobs. It increases investment. It improves productivity. It transforms living standards and creates opportunities for all of our citizens. And nowhere is that more important than here with our friends and allies in the Gulf. So first, I am delighted that we agreed yesterday to set up a new joint working group to examine how we can unblock remaining barriers to trade and take steps to further liberalise our economies for the benefit of our mutual prosperity. For example, we have just reached a new agreement with Saudi Arabia to allow British businesses to obtain five-year multiple entry visas for the first time, creating new opportunities for more bilateral business. And we have agreed that in March next year, the UK will host an event on Gulf national transformation and economic diversification plans at the Mansion House, for centuries a home of finance and trade at the heart of the City of London.